An asset is impaired when its carrying amount exceeds its recoverable amount. Now, carrying amount is amount at which the asset is carried in accounting records or shown in the financial statements. As opposite, speaking very simply, recoverable amount represents the real value of such asset. Or if we want to be more precise, it is a hire of assets or cash generating units value in use and fair value less cost to sell. We are not going to deal with fair value less cost to sell, well, if you'd like to know more about that, please watch our full video on IS36. A value in use is the present value of the future cash flows expected to be derived from an asset or cash generating unit. As you might already know, there are two basic challenges to cope with when determining value in use. The first is establishing future cash flows from the asset or cash generating unit. And the second one, that is the topic of this short how-to video, is establishment of appropriate discount rate that will be used to set up present value of our cash flows. Now, standard IS36 says that discount rate used for value in use calculation should be pre-tax rate, that is, before any income tax effects. Discount rate should reflect current market assessment of both time value of money for the periods until the end of asset's useful life and risk specific to the asset. In other words, it is the rate of return that any investor would require from an investment generating similar cash flows with similar timing and risk profiles similar to cash flows generated by the asset under review. And as you probably know, the best method of estimating the discount rate is to take some market rate for any assets with similar risks or timing. But here's the difficulty involved. When you look on any server with financial information about equities for market rates, you would probably take return on equity or similar rate as your market rate. However, this is always stated post-tax because investors are interested what they get from their investment in net basis and that is after any income tax paid. So what to do with it? Your rates are post-tax and all you need is pre-tax. Well, there are two possible solutions to that problem. The first one is to use simple grossing up formula just like this one. You simply take assets or cash generating unit standard tax rate and gross your market rate of return by that tax rate. However, it's not so ideal for every case. It is very simple but not precise at all. Definitely it should not be used in every situation, mainly because it fully neglects timing of cash flows and related tax payments. However, sometimes companies pay taxes on their income one or more years after that income occurred. Moreover, discount rate should also reflect asset specifics such as its useful life. However, if and only if you're sure that these aspects would not have material impact on the pre-tax rate, you might use this method, but remember its limitations. To illustrate it, let's take a look to our example.